Hi everyone, it's Tarrant. And Stella from Mipple University. Thanks for joining us. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Chesney. Game designed by Manuel Chung and published by YMC Studio. Let's get to the game. In Chesney, the Kingdom of Catrolia is constantly under the shifting control of four different factions. As a native of the kingdom, your aim is to keep in good with whichever faction is in control at a given time. With no fixed loyalty, your faction will shift through the game. As you try to learn which faction is dominant this round, and use action cards to try to wipe out your opposition. Each round, members of the dominant faction will score points, whether they still have health left or not, and the player with the most points after three rounds will win the game. Chesney is a game for five to ten players and comes with both a basic and advanced mode, and we'll take you through the basic rules first. In Chesney, there are five decks of cards, and when playing the basic game, you'll set them up as follows. For the dark blue character cards, remove the ten cards showing this icon in the bottom right corner. The lighter blue skill cards you won't need at all. For the green action cards, remove the two cards with that same icon in the bottom right corner. While for the red event cards, you'll use all five. For the yellow faction cards, if you're playing with fewer than seven players, then remove all of the seven, eight, and nine cards from the deck. Otherwise, you'll use them all. This deck has cards ranging from one to nine in each of the four faction colors. Shuffle the red event cards and then place one on the bottom of the action card draw deck. Then shuffle all of the green action cards and place them on top. Shuffle and place the yellow faction cards here. Each player takes a player board which shows the player colour, and places a score marker at start. Give each player three health points, and one faction token for each of the four coloured factions. Each player is dealt two faction cards face down. Players may look at their own, but should keep them secret from the other players. Shuffle the character cards and deal two to each player. Each player looks at the two they're dealt, chooses one to keep, and places it face down in the middle of their board. Deal each player three cards from the action cards deck. Choose a first player and you're ready to play. Chesney is a game of shifting factions, and earning points is all about being aligned with the right faction at the right time. Each player has two faction cards. The player will always know what those two cards are and can always look at them. Other players are not allowed to look unless they do an action which specifically allows them to, although through some actions, a player's faction cards may be flipped face up. At any given time, a player's single highest numbered faction card determines its current aligned faction. So this player is aligned to Foxtail, 5 to 4, this one to Dragon Wings, 7 to 6, and this one to Bearhead, since both cards are Bearhead. If a player's two faction cards have the same number, then that player is aligned to both factions. This is called having a dual faction, and it has both benefits and disadvantages. Through a round, players will be taking actions to try to find out each other's factions, swap out factions where appropriate, and attack each other, causing them to lose health. When a player runs out of health, that player is wounded. You'll pause the game and the wounded player will secretly check the faction or factions of all remaining unwounded players. This is called a faction judgement. Once all remaining unwounded players share a common faction, then all players with that faction, including wounded ones, score points. Otherwise, you'll keep playing until there is a dominant faction. So with that background in mind, let's take a look at how to take a turn. A turn in Chesney is played in four steps. The first step, which is optional, is to flip your character card from face down to face up, allowing you to resolve its effect above the line. Ignore what's below the line in the basic game, this is used only in the advanced mode. Second is the action phase, which involves your action cards. 
and this will be the major portion of the game. There are three ways you can do this. You can play one card from your hand to the kingdom and resolve its effect. Or you can play two cards from your hand to the kingdom and resolve their effects one after the other. If you do this, your cards must be different colours, one green and one red. Your third option is to discard a card from hand face down to the discard pile. You must choose one of these options, the actions phase is not optional. Your third step, which is optional, is called declare. And in this case you'll resolve a faction judgement, checking all non-wounded players' factions, and trying to bring an end to the round, exactly as you would have done if a player had been wounded. But if there is no dominant faction when you try this, then you are automatically wounded yourself. Then the final step is rest. Draw a number of cards from the deck equal to the number of cards you either played or discarded during this round, and then if you've drawn up above three cards, discard face down, down to three. This phase is not optional. The bulk of the game is in the different types of action cards that you can play, and you can identify the types by both the colour and the icons showing here. Intelligence cards are all about finding out about faction and character cards. These can involve checking cards, that is looking at them and then putting them back. Revealing cards, which is to flip them face up for everyone to see or covering cards, which is to flip them back from face up to face down. And note through all of these cards, this icon represents any player other than yourself, and this icon represents any player including yourself. The scroll icon represents a faction swap card, which is how you can change either your own or other players faction cards. Read the cards carefully to determine whether they should remain face up or face down after the action. Cards swapped between players may retain their direction. While when you replace your own faction from the deck, the replacement card could be face up or face down depending on which card you played to do the effect. Cards you discard are always placed face down. Heart cards are all about healing, allowing players to regain health points up to a maximum of three. These cards are about hand control, letting you gain or steal action cards to give you more hand flexibility. Just remember that at the end of your turn, the number of cards you draw from the deck is always based on how many you've played, not the size of your hand at the time. The Hourglass represents a preserve card, and this is placed in front of yourself or another player, and has a temporary passive effect. Red cards are attack cards, and this is how you deal damage to other players and remove their health points. With single swords, you're targeting attacks against a single player, and with double swords, you're targeting mass damage. For many attacks, a d12 will be rolled in order to resolve how much damage is suffered or who suffers it. And the sword icon on the card represents how much damage is suffered. The last type of action card is a flash card represented by the lightning bolt, and this is not played during the action phase of your turn. The card will tell you exactly when you can play it, and this can be outside of your normal turn, which can give you abilities such as additional numbers on your die roll, or healing when you've been wounded. There are also three different types of abilities on character cards. Red, which is an active skill, blue which is a passive skill, and yellow which is a special skill. For the active skills, you'll reveal the card at the start of your turn and then resolve it. You won't get to resolve it again unless you later cover your character card and reveal it again. For a passive skill, this skill will be in effect permanently from the moment you reveal your card. So you'll get the most benefit out of this card if you reveal it early, but that may make you a target for other players' attacks. The special skills are more like the flash action cards. They don't get revealed during your turn, you'll flip it over when it's relevant, and resolve the effect once. Once again, you would need to cover this card before you could trigger it a second time. When the last green action card is drawn, it will reveal the red event card. As soon as this card is the only card remaining, flip it face up and then resolve its effect across all players. Any cards you did play simply remain face up in the middle of the kingdom. 
they're not discarded during the game. Then reset the action deck. Put a different and new event card at the bottom of the pile and then shuffle all played and discarded cards into a new action card deck which is placed on top. A player with no health points is wounded and a wounded player has no hand of cards. These cards are discarded as soon as the player is wounded. Wounded players are not out of the game. They can still score points and they can still be healed back into life. However, the actions they take on their turn are greatly diminished. First, the wounded player draws one card. Then, if that card is an elixir, or an intelligence card, or a swap faction card, then they may play that card. Otherwise, they must either give the card to another player, or discard it. Wounded players cannot use their character skills. When one or more players is wounded, you'll pause the game and resolve a faction judgement. To do this, the player or players who were wounded will check the current faction alignment of all of the remaining unwounded players. Each non-wounded player secretly chooses the faction token from among the four which matches their current faction and then holds it secretly in their fist. A player who currently holds a dual faction would hold both of the tokens. All non-wounded players and previously wounded players now close their eyes. Non-wounded players now reveal to the recently wounded players their factions. If there is no common faction, that is, no single faction which features in all remaining players' hands, then the game continues. Players should take care to return those faction tokens to their collections of four before players open their eyes. If there is a single common faction, in this case it would be Foxtail, then the round is over. All players aligned with the common faction, whether wounded or unwounded, now gain points. If it was your sole faction, you gain 3 points. And if it was a dual faction, you gain 2. Finally, whichever player took the turn which caused this faction judgement, and usually it will be whoever played the attack card that caused the wounding, or chose to take the declare action as the third step of their turn, will gain 1 bonus point. You'll then progress to the next round and completely reset the game giving all players new characters, new faction cards and reshuffling the deck before carrying on to the next round. The round can also end in two other ways. If all players are wounded, which can only happen if the last two players are wounded simultaneously, then nobody scores any points. Secondly, if during a faction judgement all remaining unwounded players are dual faction and have the same two factions, then the round ends. Nobody gains any dominant faction points, but the player who triggered that final faction judgement still gains the one bonus point. After three rounds of play, the player or players with the highest score wins. You can also play the speed variant, where you don't count the rounds, and the first player to reach 12 points is the winner. To play the advanced game, shuffle the advanced action cards and the advanced character cards into their respective decks. You'll also keep the dark blue skill cards and the two pink skill tokens beside the board. These components all correspond to specific characters from the advanced deck. For example, these two fire spell cards belong to the pyromancer. A player whose character owns one of these components only takes the components upon revealing the character card during the game. In the advanced game, each character can now also resolve the honor mission which is below the line on the card. These represent an objective that the player is trying to meet during the game, and if the player meets the objective, they score two points. Some of these are scored during the round and some at the end and each may only be scored once per round. Whether or not you score them is independent of any faction victories for the round, and these will give you additional gameplay objectives other than simply to win with the factions. And that's how to play Chesney. We hope that you enjoyed the video. We are using a prototype copy of the game, so the rules and components may not be final, 
and do check out the project page for the game, we'll put a link to that in the description below. If you find this video useful, please help us by hitting that like button. Subscribe to us, you can also hit the meeple in the corner to do that, and hit the bell icon so you'll know when we have new videos. You can also follow me on Instagram for my board games journey. Comments, suggestions and feedback are all welcome in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, see you next time!